Hey fam, it's me Aaron for Comic Show, and if you don't know, I've been really enjoying comic books lately. Uh, when I got into stuff hot and heavy in high school, it was all the Vertigo stuff, and uh, that stuff's coming back, you know, the, the, the wacky, weird DC stuff, and I'm super excited. I, I liked um, the classic DC, Jeff Johns DC I loved when um, that era, and now Rebirth is hitting all my feels, and then this young animal coming. I couldn't be more excited about young animal. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But starting with Rebirth, The Hellblazer. This book is phenomenal. It's, it's, it's not mature reader, it's teen plus, and it's uh, Simon Oliver, and it's good. You have uh, Constantine, he's back in England, as, as you knew from Rebirth, the uh, Hellblazer Rebirth one shot. This though, it's just a great Constantine. I freaking love this Constantine, and I love that he's interacting with Swamp Thing, and Swamp Thing's just harassing him, just falling around, you know, popping up out of this fruit or this plant, and uh, Swamp Thing needs his help. And, you know, you don't get John Constantine's help, even if it's for someone he might care about, like Abby, unless you do something for him. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I, I freaking love this Hellblazer. It's the best Hellblazer since Hellblazer, since, like, actual Hellblazer, from Vertigo DC. So I, I highly suggest it. Even if you don't read DC, you don't want the DC Universe aspect, yes, there's some stuff with the Justice League in the background that John's working machinations with, but eh, that's kind of cool. Uh, moving on to Garth Ennis' uh, Section 8, Six Pack, and Dog Welder, Hard Traveling Heroes. Uh, it is kind of a spoof for satire on the classic hard traveling heroes, which, you know, I, I guess it aged all right. Uh, but they're doing a spoof of it with, you know, Green Arrow and, and uh, Green Lantern. Uh, they're not in here, but it, it's uh, these guys go on a road trip. And also there's stuff that's kind of a spoof onto um, Saga of Swamp Thing Alan Moore with uh, John Constantine's in this issue setting some stuff up and uh yeah it's it's funny it's fun uh, don't expect anything deep or heavy it's satire it's in the dc universe and it's fun so you know i've noticed though that rebirth's not on here and that's that's fine whatever you know maybe it's i guess it's in continuity whatever uh, moving on blue beetle rebirth i've always loved blue beetle i love ted cord ted cord is my most favorite hero of all the heroes it would go more like Ted Cord, Booster Gold, and then Guy Gardner is in my top three, and then probably Animal Man. But uh, Ted Cord, he's back, he's wearing goggles, he has the bug, and he's in kind of a mentor type of relationship. Not, not so much that he wants to be in a mentor relationship with uh, Jaime, but it's cool, it's, it's neat. It's sort of like uh, Batman Beyond where uh, Bruce Wayne's older and stays in the, in the background. Ted's not older, not that old, much older. He doesn't have powers, and he's just kind of making gadgets and trying to help him out with stuff. Um, he makes reference to old continuity in winky ways, but this Ted Cord has not been Blue Beetle in a costume. And, you know, that's okay, but he needs to get in a costume. He really does. And um, as you know, if you read the description, there is a guest star that's going to be in this book of Dr. Fate. So, uh, is it magic with the scarab? Is it, is it aliens like we were told with the scarab, extraterrestrials? Does it really matter? Like, uh, you know, ancient aliens, I mean, like there was magic in Egypt and supposedly aliens in Egypt. So aliens and magic, like aliens could have magic. I mean, it's kind of xenophobic to think only humans can have magic, but I'm really digging this book for Ted Cord. I love Ted Cord. If you love Ted Cord, this is where you're gonna get him. Um, and the other rebirth books are doing great. I love the direction of Titans basically Wally West book. Deathstroke has had a, a, a good start. I really like the um, antagonist in this issue of Clock King. I've always loved Clock King as a, as a goofy villain with the goofy costume and all that stuff. Um, the Injustice League, all that. Um, Hal Jordan, uh, Guy Gardner's in this book. I like that. Uh, Flash, Barry's Day Off. You have all the other Flashes and this Godspeed. And I'm psyched for what's gonna happen with Flash with how it's gonna tie in with the 10 missing years and Dr. Manhattan and all the Watchmen weirdness that may or may not happen outside of Dr. Manhattan. We don't know yet. Wonder Woman is still pretty freaking awesome. I'm really digging that book. And then like out of left field, Harley's little black book. These are one shots. These are 
single issue stories, they're thick, they're one and done. This is Harley teaming up with Harley. It's, it's, it's regular universe Harley and then Bombshells Harley. And it's set in the Bombshells universe. Like, Harley has some type of bead and uh, it takes her there and she has shenanigans, hijinks, zany stuff, stuff involving Hitler. There's a fever dream with um, a Joker Hitler. There's actual Hitler Hitler and Harley and Hitler and Sergeant Rock and all of the bombshells. And literally it's saying it's, it, this absolutely affects the bombshell universe, like absolutely alters it. And it's fun. I like the bombshell universe. It's, it's, it's cool. I, I, sure, it's mainly a visual thing, but I dig it. And that was a great one shot issue. I loved it. Uh, now. Young Animal. DC's Young Animal is uh, it's coming, uh, I think, the 14th of September. We're getting Doom Patrol 1. Uh, it's, there's four books launching. And we have this uh, Doom Patrol cover here that is North Carolina Comic Con. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Uh, my friend uh, Cap's going to be there. Uh, we're going to do some panels. We'll probably be involved in an after party. And I'm excited. I'm Gerard Way, I asked him the question last year at it of like, hey, you ever think about writing Doom Patrol since you say how much you love DC Comics and how much you love the X-Men? Doom Patrol would be a perfect fit for you. And he said, you know what? I had a pitch approved, but I didn't have time for it. I'm like, WTF, do it. And now it's a whole pop-up imprint, including uh, Shade the Changing Girl, uh, What's More Alien Than Being Human, and Cape Carson Has a Cybernetic Eye, Mother Panic. I'm so excited for this. I'm not gonna shut up about it. I've already read Doom Patrol 1 and Cave Carson 1, and I freaking loved them, and I can't wait. I can't wait, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, moving on, Ulysses 1, it's a, a new Civil War mini. Obviously, it's all Inhumans, and uh, Inhuman versus Inhuman, and uh, Karnak does his thing with Ulysses. Like, Karnak, Karnak's creepy, man, but uh, this is moving the, the Civil War story, the Ulysses story, what he sees with his future stuff, how it works, how they can make it work for them, what's going to happen with Inhumans, that's this issue. So it, it's kind of more important than the Inhumans main book. Uh, moving on to Squirrel Girl, it's uh, the end of this story arc, and I'm super excited for the uh, original hardcover. Squirrel Girl beats up the Marvel Universe, done kind of uh, tongue-in-cheek of Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe. Obviously, it's a homage cover. Uh, that comes out the first Wednesday of October. And we're going to have a big party in here for it. Like, we're going to have a, um, we're going to call it Milady's Night. And we're going to have that cover with, with Mole Man. And uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be a Squirrel Girl party. And ladies will have drink specials. And um, dudes and fedoras will have to pay more, I guess. And it's going to be awesome. Um, moving on, Snot Girl. Really enjoyed the first issue of this, O'Malley. Um, Leslie hung on art, great art. She works really well with his, his writing, and uh, I'm digging it. I, I like it. It's a, a model who looks perfect on camera and photos, but in real life, she is a total mess with allergies and snot and nastiness everywhere and, and insecurities and all kinds of, of um, drama, all kinds of drama. And does she have any friends who are friends? Are they really your friends? Uh, it, I dug it. I dug it. We sold the shit out of the first issue, and uh, we sold the snot out of the first issue. How about that? And O'Malley's great. I mean, you know him from Scott Pilgrim. Give him a chance on new stuff. And uh, finally, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the uh, annual, annual number one, has several different stories in here. The story that I thought was super, super fun is um, the artist from, from Chew, Rob Guillory. He... Um, he did a story with uh, Skull and Bulk where they become Power Rangers, and it was hilarious. So um, if you're getting the Power Rangers title, you really should get this. There's a lot of, there's several different stories. A lot of them are great. Uh, great art, great, great, uh, great writing, and uh, Rob Guillory supposedly is going to sign here at a comic shop, um, I don't know, like September 30th, yeah? Like we're gonna do a whole like chew speakeasy and the geekeasy, a chicken speakeasy. And you can get this signed because he drew that, any issue of chew signed, um, finalizing that now. But um, should be fun. So yeah. Oh, and if you saw this, I love Steven Universe so much and this was so much fun. I pulled like, 
I, I, I got several cases of this. Uh, they're blind box, Funkos, you know, mystery minis. But I want them also. I'm not unhappy with anything that I pull. But I got like the 1 to 36 Paradise. So cute. It's so cute. Um, yeah. Oh. So we have these. If you're a Steven Universe fan, like I know a lot of people are that shop here. I, I just love Steven Universe. Um, we have them. We have plenty. So don't worry. Just come, come and get them. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.